Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Tonight, we have a special guest with us. We have Henry Sattler of the metal band God Dethroned. Welcome to the show, Henry. Hello. Nice to nice to be on your show. <laughs> so, God Dethroned has a new album coming out on Metal Blade Records called The World Ablaze. But before we get into that, Henry, tell us a little bit of the history about God Dethroned. You know, what were the pre-under-the-sign-of-the-iron-cross years like? And what were some of your struggles you faced in those years? Oh, that's going to be a long story. Uh, we were founded in 1990 already, so we're a pretty old band. Um, and we, caught, we we got successful quite soon because we did our first demo, our first and only demo in 91. Then we got signed and did our first album in 92. Then we got signed into Metal Blade in 96 and did the Grand Grimoire album, then the Bloody Blasphemy album, then we did our first U.S. tour with uh, Cannibal Corpse. Mm -hmm. So some people may have seen us there. Um, yeah, and you know, we've done so many great things. We've done tons of European tours, big festivals, some great albums. And um, it's been going on uh, year after year until uh, we took a break in 2012. And then we got back together in 2015 on the 70,000 tons of metal cruise, which was awesome because uh, when we entered the stage, the crowd cheered towards us like Iron Maiden entered the stage. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was a nice comeback. <laughs> and, and, and Henry, what led to this comeback? I mean, why were you, you know, after being, you know, disbanding the band and, you know, a couple of years later coming back, well, what kind of led to the, the comeback? Um, and well, actually, I, I quit because I needed some time for myself. I mean, mm -hmm. we've been doing the same thing for many years, like recording and touring and recording and touring. I was fed up at the time, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to quit or just needed a break. And to avoid people bugging me all the time, I decided to quit. And then uh, the guy, one of the guys from Metal Blade Europe who, who signed us back in the day, he died of a brain tumor. And I went to his funeral. And on that day, I met the guys of Amonomarth again, and I met the guys from Metal Blade and Nuclear Blast and all those labels and bands. And I realized how much I missed it. And actually, that day I decided, okay, I have to go on because this is, this is my family, you know. These are the people I hang out with, and um, this is the music I like. So I have, to get, I have to get going again. And it happened on that day. And what were some of the first things you did after you reunited? Uh, well, get prepared for uh, for the shows. I mean, we, we were playing the 70,000 tons of metal cruise. That's where we ended in 2012. That's where we started again in 2015. <laughs> and then we had a lot of festivals lined up. We played a lot of shows uh, starting early 2015. So we had to get prepared again for those shows. You know, I had to learn my own songs again. <laughs> you know, you can't imagine how much you forget in three years, you know. <laughs> and then we had to make sure we're a tight band again to play good live shows. And that's that's what we did. And uh, I haven't regretted it for, for a single moment because it's been a blast ever since. I was going to say, it must, I mean, how did it feel, you know, once you got back together? I mean, you know, you took those couple of years off, kind of got, you know rested up and rejuvenated and got to think a little bit you know about what was going on so it must have felt good getting back on those terms yeah that's true i mean uh the, the break actually did a good thing because uh it spiked a lot of interest with people i mean there were so many people coming to the shows all of a sudden <laughs> i mean we could never complain about the attendance of our shows but now it was like doubled and uh, I mean that's amazing, you know. If if you, if you, if you give people uh, the feeling that they should hurry because you they never know when the last time will be, then all of a sudden they will be there, you know. <laughs> that's, so uh, that's that worked secret. out really well. <laughs> yeah, that's the secret. Yeah. <laughs> so Henry, tell us what's the current lineup of the band now? Uh, well, on drums we have uh, Mr. Michiel van der Plicht. He's been with me since 2009, and there's two new guys. Uh, Mike Ferguson 
on lead guitar and uh, Mr. Jeroen Pomper on bass guitar and they've been friends for uh, for many years and uh, I thought it would be cool to have them in the band and uh, we tried them out for two years and they fit in really well we have a great time so and they're, they're fixed band members now <laughs> now we talk about the new album now the world of blaze is the new album of course and you know right away the cover of the new album total god dethroned what we'd be expecting from you guys soldiers in the trenches why did you go with the world ablaze for this album title and and tell us a little bit about the cover art and the artist well uh, you know the world ablaze is the third album of the world war one trilogy that, that we made um it's uh, it's a concept album about world war one so we needed an album cover that fits to the story of course and um, so the people in the trenches and the big explosion in the background uh, that was a fitting fitting picture to the title the world ablaze uh, world war one was a pretty nasty war um, so the album title the world ablaze fitted very well to that and it also fits a little bit to the current situation in the world so it has a little bit of a double meaning and um, yeah, the artwork was done by uh, by a good friend of mine. He does a lot of artwork for big festivals in Europe and stuff. And uh, so he took like an old World War One picture and then added a lot of elements to make it the album cover that it is right now. And it's perfect too. Now you said this was the last in your trilogy. So this being the last album that did it. You know, did you have to pay, like, more attention to it? I mean, was there more work that you had to put into it, knowing that this is, like, the grand finale of that trilogy? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I, um, you know, the, we had a break for three years, so I had lots of ideas. You know, we just, we just started writing, and it all came out naturally. And uh, so there was no big master plan behind it. It just it just started to flow all the ideas. And as usual, we were wor we were working against the deadline. So in the week before we had to start recording drums, there were still two, two songs to be finished. And I think the last song was written two days before we went into the studio, and it's one of the best songs of the album. So spontaneity is one of our key things. You know, we always work like that. We always work against the deadline. And the, 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 the more pressure there is, the, the better the ideas get. So, you know, we, I didn't prepare at all. Of course, for the lyrics, I, I had to, because right. they all deal with, uh, with uh, real stuff, you know, things that really happened during the war. Mm -hmm. And I must admit, it was kind of hard to, to do a third album about the same topic, because I've written about 20 to 25 songs about it now. <laughs> and uh, the well was uh, drying out a little bit, so to speak. Uh, you just had to dig a little bit deeper because, I mean, you have some very specific songs in there. Like, you have that very sad instrumental um, Konigsberg, very yeah. fitting with the emotions of the destruction and the horrific thing that happened, you know, by the not Nazi officials to the Poles, and also Messina Ridge. When you think think of the events that happened while you write the lyrics for these songs does it ever get like a little emotional for you no not at all it I mean, does come for on. me <laughs> it, it, it's it's history you know it's about it's about real things that happened um i i, tr I try to write my songs from a neutral point of view um i mean there's always good and bad in a war but no matter from which side you look at it there's good and bad so you know, we like to play in Germany, and we like to play in England, and we like to play, play in France. So we, we never mention, in our songs, we never mention a specific country, usually. Mm -hmm. we, only, we only describe the battles that, were, that went on. Mm -hmm. But, but that, no matter from which country you are, you can read the lyrics and think that it's about the other one, you know? You're right. Well, and that, that, that's, I think it's a good thing, because everybody feels happy about it that way. And it's still, it's still correct, historically. Right, I was going to say, listening to it, if you if you actually know, I mean, some people have no freaking clue, and they're just like, oh, hey, there's this great war album, and I don't know what any of this shit means, but it's great. But my, yeah. my dad was a history teacher, so going huh. into this album with all, I mean, it's just, 
it's fun to listen to because you're kind of telling a historical, you know, lessons almost um, in song. Mm-hmm. I wish history class was like this. <laughs> listen to God Dethroned albums. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you can go back to school and, uh, <laughs> and, and come up with this shit. idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so right. how, how did you guys approach this album musically? Uh, well, like I said, we didn't. I mean, um, we just started writing riffs, and um, especially the new guys, they had no clue where to go to. Mm-hmm. So they were they were really cool about it. They said, Henry, here's a bunch of riffs. Just take what you think is good and just leave out what you think is not good enough, and then you can build up your songs. So that was perfect. I mean, they put their ego aside and just gave me all the stuff they had and so I could pick out what I needed for my songs and you know we we got the best of both worlds i guess you know it's my typical riffing mm-hmm. and then there's the the additional riffs from the other guys and it was uh it, it worked out really well and sometimes it's nice when you you know when you have i mean it's always difficult when you go through any kind of lineup changes as you know <laughs> but, i know yeah <laughs> sometimes when you get these you know newer people in they do kind of add a little bit of a different kind of a life to a band too and you know yeah, and that's been the problem in the past sometimes. I mean, we didn't have that many lineup changes as people think sometimes. <laughs> There's people who have been in the band for like 10 years right, or something. Right. But, of course, we had some lineup changes. And it's got to do with the fact that when you're on the road all the time, like we used to do in the past, mm-hmm. you know, some people, they miss home or they miss their family or they sure. have other obligations. So not everybody can take it. And then when somebody leaves and you need somebody else, you don't have the time to, to, to work together with somebody before you can say you're in the band. Mm-hmm. So we had to gamble sometimes. And you take a new band member, and then it turns out that it's not the right person for the band. Nothing to do with the person itself, mm-hmm. but the chemistry between each other. That should be perfect. And that's not always the case, unfortunately. That is, that's true, and then you just, you just have to do what you gotta do, and it all works out in the end anyways. So, Henry, where was this particular album recorded? In my living room. (laughs) Save a lot of money that way. (laughs) Yeah, well, not everything. I mean, we recorded the drums in Amsterdam, in a a big studio there, and then we did the rest at my house, because my house is like a recording studio Mm -hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. I got the perfect house for it, a good, perfect location for it. And um, and we needed a lot of money because we went to Dan Svano for the, for, for the mix. Mm-hmm. You know, he's the guy who did Halo, all the Halo Bullets albums. He did the Asphyx albums. He's doing a lot of stuff, but he's not cheap, you know. And uh, then we went to the to a mastering studio. It will probably mean nothing to you, but it's a Whistle Lord Studios in Holland. Mm-hmm. They are really well known. Uh, in certain places, they did masterings for Rammstein mm-hmm. and uh, with Intemptation, and then and they did us. And then, right now, we're doing three three videos for the new album. Oh boy! Uh, um, then the first one is going to be released next week, next week Tuesday on the fourth of April, for the song "On the Wrong Side of the Wire." Ah, cool! And then a week and a half later, the second video will be re- will be released for "The World Ablaze." And then by the end of the month, the third video will be released for uh, Annihilation Crusade. So now we know where all the money goes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And but you know, this money part aside, do you have fun when you get to go out and do those videos? Oh yeah, it's quite it's quite a lot of fun. I mean, uh, you know, uh, playbacking your, your your the same song for five hours in a row. Yeah, that's it can be a lot of fun. It sounds like I a mean, great time. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you know, the the, the chemistry within the band is sure. so good right now mm-hmm. that it doesn't matter what we do. We always have a lot of fun, you know? That's good. That's half yeah. the battle right there. So so what yeah. are some of the formats that it's going to be released on? The new album. Yes. Um, uh, well, on vinyl. Mm-hmm. Um, then on the regular uh, jewel case CD and on... Uh, limited edition with the CD and the DVD. Uh-huh. And the DVD will contain our shows at the Graspop Festival in Belgium, a really big show. 
And then we have uh, a live registration of the Rock Hard Festival in Germany, also a big show. Mm -hmm. And there's one song from the 70,000 Tons of Metal Cruise. Ah, that'll be awesome. So are you guys yeah. going to be doing touring and stuff like that to follow this album release up to? Yeah, but first we're going to do uh, the album release shows. We've got mm -hmm. five in total this time. We've got two in Germany, two in Holland and one in Belgium. Um, far away from, from, from you guys, but still <laughs> great stuff for us to do. And then uh, we have some weekend shows and we're going to do festivals this summer. Um, like some really big ones in Europe. And then, um, yeah, we're going to look out for, for some good tours. Uh, we need, you need a strong package nowadays to, to mm -hmm. be able to do a good tour. Mm -hmm. But we're on the lookout for that. And uh, there's been talks about the U.S. tour as well. So we'll see. You know, hopefully we can uh, make it across uh, this year. That'd be great. I think the last time I saw you guys was at the Worcester Palladium, and I don't know if it was for a Rock and Shock show or a New England Metal and Hardcore Festival, but it was a long time ago, Henry. So we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're if I can't even remember. I remember Susan was in the band. <laughs> All right. Well, um, was it? I think it was a show with Type of Negative played. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. So it was the Rock and Shock. Yeah, and the, it was like uh, yes, short shortly before he passed away. Yes, that's exactly which one it was. Because you're right. Because that was like one of the last shows that he did. Yeah. And yeah. yes, that's exactly what that was. Okay, so thank you for... Yeah. You must be a younger man than me with a younger <laughs> brain and can remember these things much better than I can, Henry. <laughs> well, it was a special occasion. Yes. I mean, uh, yeah, it was a beautiful show. Oh, it was wonderful. I mean, I have pictures and everything. So, hey, is there sites that people could go to if they want to learn more about the band? You know, do you have websites or Facebook or any of that stuff? Or yeah, but right now... Yeah, right now we're on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, look for God is Round, and then uh, our new website will be online next week. Oh, good. Uh, it's going to be godithrown.com, very simple. And it will be, it, the new website will be released also on the 4th of April, because the 4th of April, Metal Blade is going to start the pre-sales of the album, release the first video, mm -hmm. and reveal the, the, uh, the artwork uh, for the album. So yeah, everything new next week, Tuesday. Awesome. Okay, so there you have it. The World of Blaze by God Dethroned out on Metal Blade Records officially May 5th. And Henry, I mean, I listened to it. It's a great album filled with some great old school death metal and the history. And personally, I am so glad you reformed this band. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I but mean, thanks. It, it seems that you have like a really strong lineup this time around too. And Henry, thank you for yeah. taking the time to do this with us today. I know you have a lot of stuff to do today and all the best to you and the band. And hopefully we'll be looking for a U.S. tour sometime within the next year or two. Yeah, I hope so too. And uh, thank you for the interview. <laughs>